It's kind of like you can't mess it up as long as you're asking the kids to yeah. think, and then you just get better at making the most of it. One of the things we, when we were doing these examples of a possible number talk, so in the back of every range there are, I think, four examples. One of the misconceptions when people first start doing number talks is, today is my dot card day, today is my toothpick card day, today I'm asking this kind of question. What we want them to know is in any given number talk, I could have different models, I could have different questions. So even as those questions we were talking about earlier, I might decide to ask a question like this or a question like this in the same number talk. The examples are to try to help teachers see that there's a range within a number talk of materials that I could use, questions that I could ask, and I'm still trying to reach my earliest mm -hmm. child and my child needs the most challenge within the same number talk mm -hmm. by how I present the question and how I pull from this bank of ideas, not that they're in sequence, that they're just opportunities like for them to see them at a smorgasbord. Yeah. You could go and get anything on your plate, but it gives you all the opportunities. No matter what cards you choose within a range, kids will be looking for ways to find out how many, but they never know what you're going to show them. Two. How long have you been doing number talks personally? Well, I first met Kathy in 90, it had to at least been before 1995. She started coming yeah. to Las Vegas. Yeah. It wasn't the first thing that we learned, but it was one of the first things mm -hmm. that we learned was about number talks. And it was still when we were sticking dots on oh, yeah. cards yeah. and oh, gluing oh. toothpick cards and all of those things. So that was in the, at least the mid nineties, if not before, where she introduced number talks to all of us. It did, it took a long time for us. Like we went and tried it and just like other teachers will do, you get excited, like the kids noticed this, they saw this. It's kind of like you can't mess it up as long as you're asking the kids to yeah. think. And then you just get better at making the most of it yeah and honing in on that specific range that they are in. Mm -hmm. So my, my questions match them better, or better and better. And then yet, after 30 years later, sometimes it's like, oh, oh that wasn't a great number talk. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow, I'm gonna do something else. And I always say, Whatever you walk away from your number talk today saying, I wish I would have, you already know what you're going to do tomorrow because yeah. that's your reaction to how they were today. See, one of the things that makes this engaging for kids is it's unpredictable and they get to think for themselves. It's also what makes it unpredictable mm -hmm. and that sometimes we have wonderful number talks and everything is smooth, but you can't predict and that's what makes it not boring. You don't have to say I've done number talks longer than I can stand because every day is different and every day is new. And I think that's another advantage to yeah. the, the models again. Mm -hmm. And it's not that you, any model will do. It needs to be a model that leads to the math. As long as I'm putting numbers on the board every single day, it feels like it's always the same. But if I'm looking at toothpick cards, dot cards, and dot cards and Unifix cubes, it's always a And it's also true of a card because yesterday I just, I just counted. I didn't know, I didn't see anything and then all of a sudden I I notice that it looks like a table, but there's like two, or a stool, there's two mm -hmm. legs and a... And so the same card is new to me. But if I write some numbers on the board, and then I write some numbers on the board, and then I write some numbers on the board, they never look any different because I have no way of looking at any structure within the number. It just is. You can't learn anything about a seven by writing a seven. Would you say that your number talks take less effort from the teachers? More learning up front, but then eventually less effort? Because I know we talked at one point today about like the teacher's just exhausted by the end of the day. I, yeah. I think that was like the, the K-1 class yeah. where you were like, they were trying to do some sort of number talks and they were just exhausted. Well, and that, that was really the math instruction. And because it was was so teacher directed the whole time it was I say this you do that yeah. I say you do I say you do instead of I wonder what will happen at stations today I'm letting the kids get to work and they're gonna get tired because <laughs> yeah. they're working hard at their math stations so that was more during instruction as opposed to number talks do you think it is kind of similar in number talks because it's it's more asking about I, I think thinking. maybe it is still a little bit harder on the teacher in that we're asking teachers to think about where their kids are because if I'm just pulling out of a book this set of four problems that's already set up for me then I'm not not necessarily thinking about what do my kids need. That makes it easy in the sense that I don't have to think ahead. What makes it harder is that my kids aren't engaged and that they're more compliant and they're following the procedure of doing number talks, but it's not as engaging. So on the other side, when you're trying to keep in track of what the kids are thinking, it's harder in the sense that I really need to plan something that's going to be maximize their learning. But then what's easier is that it's engaging, so I'm not losing them. And the other thing is, and you kind of referred to this earlier, you really can't mess up even if you mess up. 
yeah, yeah. That's true. Because maybe you did something too hard and everybody's counting. Well, that doesn't hurt anybody. It's just that tomorrow you want to hope that you can do something that might, that might be chunking the numbers more. And I always am amazed because I can go in with my bag of cards and my Unifix cubes and I, the kids are just excited. So if I was tired of walking in, I'm less tired at the end because I'm just listening. What did you think? So, okay, I didn't do such a great job. I missed the boat on that or something. Kids didn't notice because <laughs> right. they were still looking and planning and telling me everything. And then she asked another question. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, the interesting thing too is when we talk about teachers, they could use some more. I've been doing it for 30 plus years and just going into classrooms this last week, I learned I learned something in every classroom. So you're not ever done learning more. Mm -hmm. Or a new question comes up, like we, were, we thought about some other models that might be helpful mm -hmm. after watching kids in classrooms. Math Perspectives provides professional development for educators of grades pre-K through five mathematics. Our instructor team is made up of highly qualified classroom teachers who have used our materials and practices with students in their own classrooms. A link is provided below for our professional development offerings. Booking a course is as easy as calling us at 360-715-2782 or emailing info at mathperspectives.com. Kathy Richardson, one of the nation's leading educators of elementary mathematics, is the primary author of the books used in our courses. These books provide teachers with the information they need to understand how children learn mathematics. Kathy has developed assessments that help uncover what students truly know so that teachers can provide them with meaningful experiences in a safe learning environment that helps ensure the success of all students.